everybody so today we are going to be reading his infatuation slash year's ex-listener book three so we are currently in chapter 44 but we is going to go back a chapter for the purpose of thy recap so basically long story short you were in the kitchen with pennywise and norman freddie came in tried to start up something and you had to relax uh norman because freddie was acting like y'all guys did it in the dream world or whatever which you guys did not and trying to make them mad but he succeeded temporarily until you basically was able to calm down both of them down which is Liz Pennywise and Norman and then <laughs> and then it was ooh, this one I remember like Ooh. Okay, and then basically with the whole Mikao situation that happened, which basically short, long story short is uh, Wyan thinks that it was Mikael that uh, peeked at her showering, you know, but naked, whatever. And eventually, time, 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 they all ate breakfast and um why pennywise did not get what wine was trying to say and he was like what it was a funny moment for them and she was like it's all right are you good and it was the funniest shit ever actually and then um the, this last part was just really um norman begging like begging as if somebody like whooped his ass to wash some dishes for why and i'm like okay she was like, okay, all right. Now, before we get into it, let's get a hear of Zim warnings. Getting into the story, y'all, there will be mentions of violence, stressful, and I mean a lot of stressful situations, mental health, mental health and stability, fighting and arguments, a lot of it, threats, and just a lot of aggravation a lot of stuff is going to be happening and most of it involves a lot of arguments and to the point where our character breaks down a lot so prepare y'all prepare y'all have been warned chapter 44 nine o'clock news thank you ever so much for watching the dishes you really didn't have to clean them all you know you told Norman in a soft-hearted tone. Watching the dark-haired male try dry the very last dish before putting the rest of the cutlery away. No problem, Ryan. You, you know I do almost anything for you. Almost. Norman happily replied, hugging you from the side and hiding his blush <laughs> when you cuddled him in return. I bet you can't wait to take a shower or a bath and then change clothes after scrubbing all of those dishes, huh? You inquired lightly. Figuring out that Norman must have felt somewhat tired out by now. Uh, oh, oh, no, not at all, he informed you with a timid expression. His explanation surprising you and causing your eyes to widen. Really, but, but you've been cleaning those dishes for almost one hour straight, you anxiously pointed out. Biting your lip and feeling a tad bit nervous on his path. Is, isn't there anything else that needs cleaning? Norman wondered worriedly clutching one of your hands between his while also giving it a soft squeeze at the same time. I think you might be the only one left. Not that I don't appreciate all of your help, you gratefully remarked, trying to sound thankful and relieved all at once. Because in the end, he did all that for you. But you might get lonely. Norman panicked in alarm, freaking out and flinging his arms around your body whilst he fretted over your abandonment issues. Oh, wow. <laughs> is me. <laughs> Hey, you murmured under your breath sarcastically, patting his back and trying your best to keep everything under control. You were about to continue chatting with him when all of a sudden, there was a knock at the door, taking you both by surprise and throwing each one of you off. Whoever they are, weren't invited. Pennywise insulted them with an evil glare, switching into his darker form before gripping one of his pocket knives. Weren't invited. Maybe somebody just got lost. You hesitantly theorize, trying to look on the brighter side and stop the other slashers from randomly taking somebody out. Hmm. Perhaps, dearest, but it's rare that a local even finds our 
place of residence, let alone said spot in the woods, Hannibal interjected intellectually, holding a knife of his own as he stood in the hallway himself. That's probably just, that's just probably Billy and Stu. Stepping into the hallway yourself, you decided to take matters into your own hands, moving in front of everybody before placing your hand on the doorknob instead of the others. I wouldn't worry that much about it, you guys. Seriously? Those two? Pennywise laughed in half disbelief, skeptical and suspicious due to your idea. You think it's those two? Knowing how badly my life is written? Yes. Yes, I do. You declared with one raised brow. Opening the front door before being engulfed by two overwhelming snuggles. Why, and good morning! Billy and Stu both <laughs> chorus in delight. You, 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 union. 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 I can't say it. The two of them taking turns to press their lips against each side of your cheeks <laughs> to give you a loving kiss. <laughs> I do not like them one bit. <laughs> Norman muttered maliciously, gritting his teeth and flicking his head to the side of the hallway instead of paying any attention to them. Billy Stu, good morning, you warmly greeted, flashing the both of them a friendly smile and giving them an affectionate hug in response. How are you feeling today? Did you guys sleep all right last night? We slept just fine, thank you, YN. Sue responded in a fondly fashion, curling his arm around your waist and behaving extremely gentlemanlike. How about you? Hopefully Kruger didn't give you any trouble last night now, did he? Yeah, he didn't bully you or anything, right? Billy added wildly, his defense and distressing attitude reminding you of somebody else's. Is everything okay? I think I'm managing, thanks. You brought up in a dry tone, rolling your eyes whilst also answering their next question. What you had planned for today, you were going to answer them in full detail. But the TV turned itself on loudly out of nowhere, causing yourself, Billy and Stu, Penny and Mikael to all head straight into the living room, stunned by what you were seeing. Because for some strange reason, the TV was blasting from the screen, the sound of um, the sound almost leaking from full the full power while Chucky sat on one of the living room sofas. He was sat on the sofa as if he was watching the morning news. The TV was spouting the nine o'clock news starting to creep you out and suspecting that one of the others were definitely trying to prank you police say i'm gonna say this so wrong guys so sorry police say caputo escaped from the jail bus on the way to his arrangement a massive search has begun stepping forwards you click the set off pick the doll up and left the living room heading upstairs into your bedroom so that you could dunk the doll back down on top of your drawers. What the fuck was happening here? Did Mikael or the others think this was some kind of sick joke? If so, this wasn't very funny. This wasn't very funny whatsoever. Whatever was going on needed to stop right now, whether it was a prank or not. It needed to be nipped in the bud immediately. Okay, this isn't very funny. You angrily snapped at the others, leaving the doll in your room so you could just slam the so you could just slam the door shut. Do you think I'm stupid, huh? Do you think I'm gonna just believe that the doll switched the nine o'clock news on by itself? Uh, are we supposed to know what's going on here? Stu questioned with a confused look, not understanding until you told him what was going on with said doll die. I'm seriously getting some real horror movie vibes right now. Bill de Billy declared uneasily, thinking back to the box and what clean condition the doll was in when the three of you found it. Well, it wasn't us. What do we have to do to prove that to you? Mikael scribbled down furiously, furiously, flooding through his frustration, flooding through his words once he showed you his regular notepad. But Kruger and I both sensed soul power inside the doll. Narrowing his eyes and glaring at the other killers, Penny reminded the rest of the slashers what was going on. Everybody standing in the upstairs hallway by this point, just so they could discuss the former facts. Everyone, please. I'm more than certain that we can figure this out, with or without Kruger, or Voorhees as well for that matter. Hannibal called out calmly, keeping not only Billy and Stu under control, but also Mikael, Norman, and Pennywise too for that matter. You know when people begin to figure things out, they usually leave me out. If I wasn't so much better than all you, <laughs> I'd start to feel rather offended. A sly voice sadistically drawled out. 
another slasher materializing straight into the group in the house's upstairs hallway altogether. Chapter 45, Pointing Fingers I blame Kruger, Norman cried out ir irrationally, pointing fingers and blaming the dream demon without any information whatsoever. I bet, I bet he's the one who's been messing, messing around with YN recently. Just admit it already. You do already give her nightmares. Stu chipped in with a cautious expression, looking slightly uneasy while he shared a suspicious glance with Billy. And you are pretty sadistic anyways, dude. Oh, please, give me a break. I may be sadistic, but if I were to pull a pathetic pathetic little pranks like that, I'd confess and own up to them. <laughs> right off the fucking bat, too, may I add. Freddy stubbornly snapped back holding his finger knives out before glaring at the rest of the other slashes with the utmost amount of resentment. You see why I was so fucking frustrated when nobody believed me? Mikao scribbled with, to Freddy with annoyance, practically shoving the notepad into his face as he, as he stood nearby him. I'm starting to. The dream demon muttered under his breath darkly, twitching from rage, almost losing his temper. This is ridiculous. Blaming me out of all people. Pennywise here told us that you sent soul power within the doll at the same time he did. Is that true? Hannibal commented with a casual tone of voice, tilting his head to the side a tiny bit before throwing the demonic killer a stern look. Soul power. Wait a minute. I thought that was just old folklore. Billy remarked in a surprised fashion, his eyes wide from shock once he'd heard the psychiatrist interrogate the personally offended king of nightmares like that. Yeah, well, you better start thinking outside your little box, dude, because somebody's definitely breaking the fucking reality rules for you, okay? Freddy retaliated maliciously, purposely striking up a fight and trying to rile up one of the two friends. Wow. It may be nothing but a myth to you both. Soul power has always been real to the rest of us. The dark-haired male smoothly told the duo, knowing full well that Freddy's methods of aggravation would easily create a child, childish temper tantrum. Is there a way to rid of its power? A way to remove the soul power from the doll even? Stu slowly inquired ignoring Billy's infuriated sound toward Freddy and remaining mature. I'll, I'll see what I can find. Soul power is insanely ancient and authentic ability. It's almost impossible to access, and when it is accessed, it takes an incredible amount of skill to even start to twist it to your desires. Hannibal intellectually explained, his smart mindset already adapting to what's going on and how to handle this situation. We don't even have a plan. You coldly spoke, your thoughts clashing with one another as your fish cleansed together. What exactly are we supposed to do? We don't even know who's behind the moving the stupid doll. Hmm. Good point, Mianata. It would certainly benefit us to devise one. He continuously, he continued thoughtfully, glancing around before thinking to some, some more between the group. Why is moving the doll of all things that important to you? I thought we were only focusing on the soul power. Penny cut in with a curious tone, frowning at how worked up you were becoming and not understanding your present feelings. Oh, sure, of course, figuring out who's been missing, messing with me isn't important. Why wouldn't it be? Snapping like Freddy previously had, you lost your temper and shouted at everybody, not feeling overly pissed. I've been peeked in the shower. This doll's been randomly moving in position. The TV magically turned itself on this morning. You were peeked at in the shower? That's pretty low. Stu defensively sighed, shaking his head as he glanced in the direction of Mikael. Yeah, no kidding, and I bet I know who did it. Billy added with a roll of his eyes, both his sarcasm and disgust slipping through his voice. Mikael simply narrowed his eyes. His dark brown eyes, sh I thought he had blue eyes, whatever, showing nothing but hurt whilst he watched you n merely break down and lose your mentality. I don't know you guys. Norman n mumbled timidly, nervousness flickering across his face before after he noticed your current animos animosity. I still think it, it was just Kruger who did it. Well, it was clearly one of them. Pennywise lazily decided, the clown growing bored and grinning at not just Freddy, but Mikael 
as well. Pretty sure they're just cowards, hiding between the rest of us just so they don't get called out. Ah, uh, you're just describing yourself, huh, bitch? Freddy. <laughs> okay, that's kind of okay. That's funny. Freddy creepily smirked, twitching and preparing to fight against the clownish killer like he usually did. No, I'm explaining what a wickling would do. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I don't know how to describe them because there's not enough words in the mortal dictionary to even begin to try and compliment them. Penny cooed angelically. Damn. Oh, damn, damn, damn. His nasty taunting obviously directed towards Freddy himself and mocking him from the very start. I think hard. I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. That kind of like, that was funny. I hardly think this is the time for such trivial exchanges, you two. <laughs> that was just funny. Hannibal scolded them seriously, picking up your, on your concerns and emotions right away. Honestly, why not stressed out enough as it is? Oh, yeah, because you're so much better, aren't you? You yelled at Hannibal with absolute agitation. Your fear... And frustration boiling to br to the brim before dripping below the cracks. Always pretending to be super duper pleasant all the time. Oh, I might actually be enjoying this mini war bubbling around us all. <laughs> Freddy mysteriously mummered, leaning against the upstairs hallway's wall, also watching the fight between you and Hannibal break out. Wyan, are you all right? After seeing your outburst, Norman worried over you about your feelings and reached to place his hand on top of your shoulder. Shock flooding his eyes when you smacked his hand straight away from you. Why and what was that for? Oh, I'm sorry. You apologize and, and sincerely. Rage controlling your every action looks everyone, minus Freddy, Miguel, and Hannibal, expressed just how stunned they were by your reaction. But maybe that wouldn't have happened if you didn't constantly try and smother me all the freaking time. I I'm sorry, Wyatt. I... I had no idea you felt that way right now. The bashful man, the bashful man male mumbled, tearing up and backing away from you in the hallway as he silently panicked. Yeah, I do, because I'm not the only one being peeked out in the shower and being stopped. Nobody else seems to give a damn about. Before you could finish your complaint, and, uh, Mikael gripped one of your shoulders. Yeah, okay. Mikael gripped one of your shoulders and shoved you forcefully against one of the hallway walls. Uh, using his right hand to slam the tip of his kitchen knife inches next to the side of your face, side of your head. Because although the pale masked male remained mute, his reckless reaction and pained glare spoke much louder than simple words ever could. He was showing that he did care, and that he was more than willing to prove his innocence, no matter what it took. Chapter 46 Afternoon Visit Mika, let Wyan go now! Norman angrily cried, pushing the male fat, m pale ma faced male away from you and forcing him to stumble in the process. You, you could have hurt her! Damn straight! Billy added with fury, wrapping his arm around her waist and curling you towards him instead. All she did was lose her temper, mate. There was no need for what you just did. Stepping to your aid, Stu agreed with the other two and stood protectively in front of you, grasping his pocket knife while he became aggravated too. Well, I mean, she did just yell at us all. <laughs> the dream demon drawled out in dark amusement crossing his arms and leaning against the opposite side of the upstairs hallway. If my character design wasn't so developed, I would have lost my temper and snapped right back. What? <laughs> Raising your eyes, you felt irritation levels simply, your irritation levels simply bubble to the front surface a second time. Re resenting how still, how still, nobody seemed to pick up on how distressed you were feeling. Well, apart from Norman, but he always seemed to. Oh, yeah, because your personality is so well written. Pennywise sharply taunted, shifting into his darker form and before stressing you out even further. Everybody, please, this isn't helping. If anything, this is increasing our sweet YN stress levels. After carefully choosing his words, Hannibal calmly cut in and shut their fighting down, sensing how each one of them were affecting you. As a matter of fact, I still can't believe that you are all bickering this babyishly. You know what? I can't either. You retaliated coldly, 
Breaking away from Billy's hold while also avoiding everybody else's glances. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get ready. But, why in it's, it's a Saturday. Norman pointed out with a timid tone of voice. Clasp me each side of clasping each side of his arms but as he flashed you a confused gaze in your general direction duly noted norman you sarcastically responded rolling your eyes like you had a few minutes ago while he watched you open your bedroom door and enter it seconds after in case you were wondering wyan visits camp crystal lake each uh, each of each what each another day Apart from Sunday, of course, because that's only fair. Wouldn't you agree? Norm pleasantly explaining, the smart psychiatrist reminded Norman so that you didn't have to. The dark-haired male growing sour once he heard the truth. Only to pacify an ancient psycho who lives in the forest. Billy bittered, muttered, bitter, muttered bitterly, throwing a glare towards Hannibal at the very same time Stu did. That is so not true! You stopped in a fierce fashion. Slamming the door shut behind you before carrying on, shoving things into your backpack. Ugh, stupid Billy, stupid Stu, stupid Norman, stupid Hannibal, stupid Penny, stupid Mika, stupid Freddy, stupid everyone. Ooh, damn, I did that speedily. You were being stalked again, and they were more focused on fighting. In fact, all you wanted to do was leave and approach Camp Crystal Lake to walk around the campsite with Jason so that you had planned... So that's what you plan to do, to say goodbye to everybody else before actually leaving the main house. See you guys later. You spoke to them with a silent exasperation, pushing your backpack onto your shoulder before, re before re reopening your bedroom door. Wait, you, you can't go yet? Norman bursted out desperately, anxiety flooding from his tone while he attempted to stop you from leaving. Norman. Whew. I thought that we've been through this already. I'm allowed my freedom as long as I agree to hang out with all of you guys. You pleasantly pointed out, heading downstairs before opening the front door and raising your hand as a wave. That is indeed very true, my dearest Wyan. Hannibal responded in a polite fashion, flashing you another one of his charming smiles while it's also waving back at you. We did, in fact, promise you precisely that. Thank you. He replied to the psychiatrist gratefully, leaving the house a second or two later and heading into the forest. Now wait just a minute, Penny coldly exclaimed, teleporting immediately next to you and shifting into his darker form. Who said you could just walk through the forest alone, sweetkins? I did. Shuggering carelessly, you allowed him to accompany you. Mikael, Billy, and Stu also joining you after you breathed out and sighed. It's funny how you didn't recognize my authority earlier. <laughs> Still, the forest is dangerous. You shouldn't just... Take off by yourself. You should know this by now, whether you like to admit it or not. What the fuck were you thinking just now? Just then, honestly, Wyan, you could have been seriously hurt. <sighs> Mikael scribbled down resentfully, holding said notepad outwards to you afterwards. Well, yeah, I was. I haven't. Wasn't? Well, excuse me, I read that so wrong. Yeah, well, I wasn't. You huffed with a roll of your eyes. Letting the pale-faced male, Benny, Pennywise, Billy, and Stu escort you in the direction of Camp Crystal Lake. So, can you guys please stop with the silly overprotection and just wrap up being my bodyguards for this afternoon? I suppose so. The killer clown lazily decided, throwing you a mischievous grin before purposely knocking Mikael's notepad out of his grasp and onto the ground. You could at least try to be civil. <laughs> Billy scolded in an icy manner, Stu dipping his head as a nod and agreeing with his friend's current comment. Yeah, mate, why would, we, why would you even pull something like that? Talk about bad-mannered. Stu insulted rudely, behaving spiteful and petty all at once. I think you are all acting rather bad-mannered this afternoon. You cut in, as you patiently made Penny pick up the notepad and hand it back to you, seeing as he wouldn't return Mikhail's item to the stalker. Here you go, Mikhail, here's your notepad. Glaring menacingly at Pennywise, the silent slasher carefully took the notepad out of your hands and tucked it slowly into his boiler suit's pocket, clearly debating on whether he should attack the other killer for his previous actions. Then, he kept on staying by your side and being an escort, even though he despised Penny, Billy, and Stu. He could have attacked him at any time, but he decided to follow through with your wishes and keep everything peaceful instead. And, well, 
until you approached Camp Crystal Lake and got scooped into a bear hug by Jason himself. It was about time, too, considering just how much you'd actually missed the Camp Crystal Lake killer. And after you seen just how much he missed you in return. His warm reaction was extremely cute. Jason spinning you around in circles just like a little kid would. To, to tell the truth, he was so adorable that he easily accepted your apology and forgave you for being late. Your visit taking place during the early afternoon instead of the late, left in the late of this morning. Once you'd finally finished sweetly saying goodbye a second time, you pressed your lips softly against everybody else's and gave everyone a cuddle of, your, of their own. Billy and Stu looked a little sulky, but still reacting affectionate regardless. Catch you guys later this evening. Goodbye, YN. See you later, YN. Bye-bye, honey bun. This is so cute, but so cute. Chapter 47. Hanging out. See you in a bit, Mikael. You promised him loyally, wrapping your arms around him before bringing him into a tender, loving hug. You still hadn't forgiven him for peeking at you at, at, in the shower. But after the doll moving incident this morning, you weren't necessarily sure what to believe anymore. So, once he nodded his head lovingly, the obsessive male accepted your adorable embrace and curled his arms around you in return, resting his chin atop your hair whilst doing his best to hide his bitterness at the very same time. But even though he tried his hardest to hide his saltiness, he still managed to pick up on Mikael's sour behavior. The white mask killer slicing one of the Camp Crystal Lake's trees and making it fairly obvious about how he truly felt on the inside. Feeling worried, you did your best to reassure Mikhail and stop him from damaging the natural property even further, steering him and the other three away from the lake in general. Then, when everybody had left the campsite, Jason exploded with joyful excitement, yanking you into another strong-hearted snuggle as he asked you how you were feeling so far. Of course, your answers was flooded with amusement, finding the Camp Crystal Lake killer to not only be childishly cute, but also refreshingly relaxing too. So, Jason, what you want to do? You shyly wondered, letting him twirl you around after you responded to his question. Whatever you want to do, Ian. He replied adoringly, tugging you into his chest before nuzzling his head into your hair. You were about to comment on his usual blood-stained smell, but then you realized he must have taken a shower and changed clothes by the time you'd arrive which was rather really considerate of him. Well, I'm up for anything, as long as I'm with you. You told him truthfully, cuddling him back and appreciating his soft-hearted embrace. I mean, there's picking, there's picking berries, and there, there's always the walk around the lake, Jason suggested in a sweet tone, sounding happier and happier by the minute. Sounds good to me. Why don't we both, why don't we do both? You kindly commented, breaking free of his hold so you could give him a high five and agree to his ideas. I'd love to. The hockey mask slasher spoke to you happily. Tears, prick, tears of delight prickling at the edges of his eyes while he tucked his trusty machete into his denim jeans. Why don't we start with the berry picking then? He quizzed lightly, pushing your backpack further behind your shoulder and looking around at the bushes. But be warned. I don't know much about which fruits are safe and which ones are dangerous, so you'll have to teach me. Don't worry, I I'm super duper smart. Jason reassured you with uh, the utmost of pride, sounding highly smug about his upcoming knowledge. Oh yeah? Prove it. Sticking your tongue out, you toss him a slight smirk and tried to mess around. The Crystal Lake Killer failing, falling prey to your comment and finding your words to be funny instead. So, that's what happened. When J Jason leading you through the forest and teaching you about the differences between the good berries, the neutral berries, and the toxic berries. The two of you pluck plucking said fruits into your baskets and discussing their differences during the time you were spending together. This activity definitely calmed you down and also distracted you from the dull disaster. So much so, in fact, that you realized a sigh of relief that you released a sigh of relief and enjoyed a few of the healthy treats yourself. 
Jason treating himself to some of the delicious berries as well. It was a fun task to finish, and as time ticked on, com completing your visit with your regular walk around the lake unquestionably made the, the moment that much more special, especially since you were enjoying berries, chatting with to Jason, and walking beside him at all, all at the same time. But alas, just as the early sunset dipped down behind the gloomy green hills, you knew that your time was up knowing that the other killers were impatiently waiting for you to return home. I guess it's time for me to go home, you gently pointed out, turning your attention towards a cramped Crystal Lake sign and noticing the four other killers waiting to pick you up once again. It's not fair. Jason complained selfishly, stomping his foot before pulling out his machete out like a little child would. I spent the entire afternoon with you. You mentioned with another sigh. This one not being one of relief, but of weariness instead. Anyways, it's not goodbye forever. It's just goodbye until next time. Until Tuesday. But, but, Jason protested in a teary tone, dragging you into a heavy hug and spinning you around. But I need you. And I need you too. You softly brought up, wrapping your arms around his body directly after the cut, after the cuddling. But right now, I need to head home and get some shut-eye, especially if I'm to face Freddy later on. Hi, Pipe still always works. He growled in a vicious voice, his gaze twisting into one of a glare as he showed his inner dislike towards the sadistic dream demon. I'm sure it does, but I don't think I could handle Freddy materializing and dematerializing inside and outside my bedroom, you know. You explained to Jason calmly patting his shoulder while glancing at the Camp Crystal Lake entrance. But, but why in? The masked male whined miserably, grabbing your wrist and stopping you from leaving the overall grounds. No buts, mister. I'm sorry, but no means no. You sternly argued, throwing him a stubborn stare of your own and breaking free of his hand's grasp. I'll be back here on Tuesday, okay? Okay. Jason muttered under his breath moodily agreeing to your demands, and letting you go. I love you. I love you too, even if you do no annoy me sometimes. You teased playfully, nudging the sides of his body with your elbow before planting a kiss on his cheek right afterwards. See you next next Tuesday? The child minded killer pleaded with a hopeful glance in his eyes, seeing you greet the other four slashers at the Camp Crystal Lake sign. You, you know what I mean. See you next Tuesday, Jason. You sincerely vowed, promising to keep your words once you waved goodbye to the Crystal Lake Killer. Then, after you'd hugged and kissed the other four, you allowed them to walk you back home, none of them losing their tempers or starting a fight. For the first time ever? Chapter 48 Evening Accusations Ah, Wayan, welcome home. It's such a delight to have you back here again. Hannibal greeted you in his usual charming fashion, flashing you one of his gentleman-like smiles immediately after you'd opened the house's front door and watched you enter inside. I certainly hope you enjoyed yourself over at Camp Crystal Lake. Oh, um, yeah. That I did. You hesitantly re retaliated giving him a pleasant smile in return and trying to calm yourself down due to your previous behavior. At least your bad attitude at least your bad attitude before you'd left. Enjoy myself, I mean. It was definitely relaxing to unwind over by the lake and walk around the woods, like I usually do. How nice to hear. He respectfully responded taking one of your hands into his before planting a kiss delicately on top of your fingers. I'd hate for Jason to cause you any more trouble, considering everything you already have to go through when visiting him. Everything I have to go through? You quoted with sarcasm? Sorry, I even said that with a question. <laughs> you quoted with sarcasm, raising your eyebrows before rolling your eyes and heading into the hallway. Please don't misunderstand me, amor. Hannibal softly murmured, after placing one of his hands upon your shoulders and preventing you from heading directly upstairs. I was just extremely worried about when you lashed out at us the way you did. Oh. Yeah. 
about that. You mumble, sorry y'all, you mumbled apologetically, avoiding his gaze and staring at the hallway floor instead of the other killers. I really didn't mean to burst out that way, the way I did. I'm sorry. Oh, Wyan. Norman exclaimed with ecstasy, <laughs> happiness leaking from his tone as he bounced down the stairs to engulf you into an adoring embrace. Of course we knew that you didn't mean it. I'm just, I'm just so happy that you finally came home. You are, but I acted so angry towards you guys. Because they deserved it. But anyways, you pointed out in a surprised tone. Embarrassment swirling around your expression. Whilst you carried on biting your lip and awkwardly patting Norman's back. I lost my composure and I, I didn't behave like myself at all. You were upset with us. Personally, I think you had every single right to shout at us. The psychiatrist commented Ed, with an intelligent mindset. Norman nodding at his remark while Billy and Stu dipped their heads at the very same time, especially Pennywise, considering he didn't take your feelings about the doll into account, nor did he take your reaction very seriously. Okay, okay, point taken, I see what you mean about earlier and such. You dryly remarked, pushing yourself away from everybody before moving closer towards the stairs. Anyway, if you all will excuse me, I really need to unpack my backpack from today and get ready to cook for tonight's dinner. But of course, please don't hesitate to call if you need anything, though, mi amor. Agreeing to your simple demands instantaneously, Hannibal shot you an extremely sweet smile, acting strangely out of character as you stopped yourself from frowning. He was behaving like his entire character arc needed to be rewritten or redesigned or something of that nature. <laughs> However, you are way too exhausted from this morning and your trip to Camp Crystal Lake to focus on the others right now. If anything... You had to unpack the things from your backpack. Head downstairs again, cook a meal for dinner, considering you still haven't converted over to Hannibal's culture yet. Still, and then fall asleep, slash deal with Freddy's crap. Not to mention, forget about this whole entire creepy doll conflict. Though, wait a minute. Glancing around, you hurriedly looked all over the place. The doll was missing from where you last tossed it. The doll wasn't sitting on top of your bedroom doors, where you previously shoved it. Fear flooded your veins when you noticed that the doll was secretly hidden inside your wardrobe, sitting at the bottom and slyly grinning. With a stunned gasp, you took a step back or two, eternally panicking and silently wondering what the hell you were supposed to do here. But then, your horror cleared, hurt and hatred clouding your heart due to the feeling, due to feeling head up and taunted instead. Are you guys serious? You hotly shouted, throwing your backpack straight next to your bed and clenching your fist as a cons consequence of losing your temper like the very last time. This isn't funny whatsoever. This is obviously one of you. Just own up to it and admit it already. I agree. I do find my jokes the most amusing. <laughs> if I had to pick out, out of all of these idiots. Freddy jawed out popping right into existence before leaning mysteriously against one of your bedroom walls. Hi again, sugar. How have you been? Don't mess with me. Your jokes aren't amusing. This isn't amusing. Gritting your teeth and retorting with resentment, you glared at the dream demon angrily, catching him off guard and causing him to behave oddly bewildered. I've just had just about enough of your immature behavior. I'm sorry, bitch. What? Care to explain? Because I don't know what the fuck you're going on about right now. He sharply snapped. He sharply snapped, pulling himself away from the wall so he could hold his knife hand menacingly out. Just own up to it. I know for a fact that you placed that doll in my wardrobe. You blamed him furiously, pointing your finger at the doll whilst directing his attention over to the smirking doll. Why the hell would I waste my time playing around with such a shit-looking object? I mean, look at it, sweetheart. I'm not a loser. Insulting it rudely, Freddy shouted his head, shook his head, <laughs> and stared at you with rage. The demonic killer, plainly offended by your sudden accusations while the others entered your bedroom one by one. When is everything all right? What's wrong? Norman anxiously cried aloud, hurrying inside first before clasping his hands around against his chest and staring at you with distress. Well, it wasn't Jason, so therefore it was either you, Penny, Mikael, Norman, Hannibal, Billy, or Stu. Why would you include Billy as you? They don't even live there. 
Anyways, you spoke towards Freddy stubbornly, narrowing your gaze as you watched Penny pop into view. Mikael swiftly moved into sight, noticing noticed Norman burst into tears and then saw the psychiatrist sigh. After entering your bedroom himself, y'all are real dumb. Like for real, y'all got that book of knowledge with the fucking soul thing and then not even read and shit. Y'all, this could not be the first time people have done this. But instead of just dolls, it's like with other shit. This cannot be the first time. This cannot. Ain't no any way this is the first time. Anyways. Wyan, dearest, why don't you head back downstairs and we'll handle the doll dilemma from here on out. Hannibal offered softly, wrapping his arm around your shoulders as he attempted to calm you down to some degree. That way you don't have to get that. That way you don't have to worry about finding out the person responsible for cruelly trying to pester you well it had to be one of you guys you protested in a desperate tone still sounding relatively infuriated while your stubbornness continued to stay i mean come on jesus not allowed into this house not to mention he's was by my side the whole entire afternoon so who else could have entered my bedroom whilst i was at camp crystal lake oh so this is what this is all about you're still scared chuckling evilly Freddy smirked just like the doll, losing his confusing while you kept glaring at him. You're still placing the blame on us because you're still insecure. I'm not insecure. I'm just pissed off. You fired back in a fierce fashion, reacting to his words without any hesitation and breaking free from Hannibal's hold to confront Freddy instead. See, what? It, this is why you get no bitches. <laughs> okay, anyways. Uh, <laughs> He's gonna piss her off real bad. No, of course you're not in secure doll face. <laughs> the dream demon maliciously mocked, making a pun out of your problem and taunting you on purpose before going on. After all, it's not like it as if you're losing your mind or constantly losing your temper or anything like that. Enough, Kruger. Hannibal scolded the demonic slasher coldly, raising his voice while it's defending you. Honestly, you are the worst of the you are the worst source of comfort I've ever been forced to even stumble across whatever it's probably either the fucking clown or the fucking stalker this has absolutely this, this has gone this has got absolutely nothing to do with me got that bitch freddie answered without any further interest shrugging carelessly as he aimed his finger knives forefinger and not only pennywise but mikhail as well chapter 49 intense information Mikael does own several masks. Norman agreed unwillingly, sliding with Freddy before shooting Mikael an icy glare on himself. Not to mention, Pennywise has hurt Ryan in the past, so Kruger's accusation do seem to make sense to some sort of degree. I can vouch for that. Considering you're a known stalker and the killer is a clown, the clown is a killer too. It's pretty obvious to everyone where you're Certain skills lie. Billy, chi Billy chipped in with a fake sigh of disappointment. Stu shaking his head while also joining with the other slasher's thoughts on said matter. You'd better be joking about this being me, little boy, because I don't take lightly to pathetic claims such as these. Pennywise spoke up psychopathically, shifting into his darker form as he unstably grinned. Well, like our precious Wyan plainly pointed out, it has to be one of us. Right, sweet cheese? I'm going to say two things. Freddy de de deceitfully drawled out, curling his arms around you from behind before deciding to pull you directly into his chest. I blame Myers personally. <laughs> now, hold on just a second. You protested in a panic, noticing how hurt and head up Mika was becoming. I don't know who to blame yet. All I know is that one of you did it while I was hanging out with Jason, and that is all. I blame Kruger myself. <laughs> He's untrustworthy, twisted, two-faced, and dishonest. Completely corrupted. After, Of course he'd lie and throw somebody else under the bus. He'd do that without any regret whatsoever. He's nothing but a psychopath. or And sociopath. Penny pointed out spitefully, showing his dislike and overall hatred for the dream demon shortly after, you, after joining in. Oh, and you aren't? Freddy laughed in furious disbelief. His arrogance arising due to Pennywise's insults. 
I wasn't the one who turned her friends against her, made her temporarily depressed, poured blood all over her, stole her soul from her, and threatened to kill her below some tacky tunnels. You actually did that? Stu asked Pennywise curiously, raising his eyebrows whilst folding his arms and looking skeptical. That's pretty low, dude. Billy commented in an awkward tone, sounding suspicious of the clown and changing suspects. I'm starting to think that you did this, not Myers or Kruger. Oh, and what evidence do you have exactly to prove that I'm the one responsible for this, hmm? Hmm? Slightly, gi slightly giggling, Penny sounded slightly insane for a second, his darker form taking over while you became increasingly more stressed out by everyone else's inner rage. Uh, you can do the exact same thing that Kruger can, mate. Billy brought up sarcastically, stepping closer to you and making sure that Freddy didn't try anything suspicious. Yeah, you can dip in and out of reality in a flash. Stu sternly mentioned, standing on the other side of you before continuing. You can sound so power just like Kruger can. So what? What does that have to do with anything? Pennywise scoffed rudely, sounding bored by their accusations and deciding to just grip a knife in his hand instead. Not to mention that you're known to have technesis. Billy remarked with a self-satisfied look and superior attitude. I mean, think about it. Technesis and being able to teleport within mere seconds would make it more easy to mess with Wyatt. Don't you think so? What do you think I'm using my technesis and teleportation skills to mess with one person I care most about? Really? <laughs> Laughing crazily, Penny remained in his second form. Not only grasping the knife, he'd materialize into his hand but also twitching after he's possessively and lovingly responded. That is so cute, though. Okay, okay, let's take this discussion down a notch. You called out alarmingly, the stress clouding your head while you struggled to keep it together. In fact, you didn't know if you could keep it together much longer. We don't have enough clues to wrap this up yet, so if everyone could just... I blame Mikael. I'm not, go I'm not only going with Kruger, but those weakling little earthlings now, too. Sorry, fuckers. I wish I gave an actual shit about what you guys think. But the truth of the matter of fact is just... I just don't. I think the clown did it. Couldn't agree more, Stu. Guys! You screamed out in rage, losing your composure in complete calm. Stop placing the blame on each other and just listen to me for a moment. <sighs> Didn't you just place the blame on Gruger like an hour ago, though? Penny inquired with a puzzled face. The worst time to talk, dude! <laughs> the museum folding his features after, <laughs> after he witnessed the exploding wrath and placed it on Myers continuously during these last couple days. Well, yeah, I, I did. But that doesn't matter. <laughs> you admit it ashamedly, right? Averting your gaze and losing your anger uh, for a couple seconds. But that was out of stress and out of pressure. And I'm very sorry about that. But I'm positive we can figure this out. I'm certain that we can as well, my dear. Hannibal warmly agreed with you, finally deciding to speak and voice his opinion. Very well said. Thank you. You sighed in relief, sitting down on your bed while also tucking a strand of hair behind your ear, too. Jeez. I still bring me their cook, the clowner Myers. Freddy rudely announced, throwing both of them a twisted smile as he purposely tried to win the other, the other two slashers up. I mean... <laughs> Come on, look at those two sorry excuses for characters. Oh, you weak disgrace for an actual dream demon. Everyone, please. The intellectual male interjected smoothly, smoothly, shutting down each and every killer down before deciding to continue. You two are both being completely ridiculous here. How so, bitch? The dream demon retorted bluntly, sending the psychiatrist a glare and trying to pretend as if he didn't care about being insulted because both of your speculations towards one another make absolutely no sense hannibal smartly showed shaking his head before sighing himself for starters miguel and pennywise were both escorting our lovely ryan to and from camp crystal lake just like they usually do therefore unless ryan noticed one of them disappear from her side during said time kruger's allegation doesn't add up at all one of them could have moved the doll oh excuse me one of them could have moved the doll while she spent time with Voorhees in the camp, though. Idiot. Didn't think about that, now did you? <laughs> Freddy jeered in return, attempting to one-up Hannibal and prove his theory was correct. I hardly doubt that. However, Norman, would you answer something for me? Hannibal asked calmly, 
gesturing the worked up killer to come forth and join his side. Um, sure, what's going on? Norman cautiously replied, narrowing his eyes before he agreed to his simple request. As I recall, your room is directly opposite YN's, is it not? Hannibal suddenly noted out of the blue, startling everyone in your bedroom at the same time as he confounded and Norman also. Yep, wait. Does that have to do with any what what does that have to do with anything with with the doll? Norman snapped back defensively, feeling attacked and quickly blamed. Oh, nothing. I just thought that you, out of all people, would have noticed somebody suspicious into her room during the afternoon. Hannibal innocently announced, calming Norman down and causing the blame game to bubble down. Yeah, I would have. Norman agreed with his remark protectively, nodding his head before clenching his fist. 100%. I would have noticed, but nobody did. The door didn't open or close. I didn't hear anyone enter her room. I didn't even hear the doll get picked up or or moved. Chapter 50 Comforting Assistance You didn't? You asked Norman in a, deje in a dejected manner, sounding increasingly more disappointed and disheartened at this, as time passed. You didn't hear anything happen during the afternoon? I'm sorry, Wyan. I, I really am. Stumbling over his words, Norman apologized towards you as quickly as he possibly could, sending you an ashamed glance immediately afterwards. But believe me, I always pay attention to your bedroom and belongings whenever you're gone. Honestly. Oh, um, thank you, I guess. You thanked with a fake gratitude, feeling a little unnerved by one of Norman's secret pleasures. Because that's not creepy whatsoever. Billy muttered under his breath coldly, crossing his arms and judging the other killer without any second thought. Yeah, you're telling me, mate. Stu sided with him within a matter of seconds himself, sounding just as stern and judgmental as Billy. Waiting to sigh like earlier again, you forcibly restrained yourself. Exhaustion washing through your veins whilst you silently stood up, remembering you had to prepare dinner for tonight. Excuse me, but I need to go. You spoke in a serious voice, ignoring your feelings of exasperation and weariness as frustrated tears pricked at the edge of your eyes. B but wait, we, ha we haven't finished yet. And Norman panicked desperately, clutching one of your wrists with both of his hands before holding that hand obsessively against his chest. You're not mad at me, are you? <laughs> Managing to hold your anger in, you faked a smile and used your other hand to free your wrist from Norman's hold, deciding to fiend your calmness about the whole situation. No, 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 I'm not mad at you, Norman. I just, I just, I mean, I still need to make dinner. Otherwise, I don't have enough time to cook anything for tonight. You understand, don't you? Oh, oh I see. Norman expression cleared, the dark-haired male's mood brightening once he understood what you were trying to do. You're just hungry. Mm-hmm. You replied cheerfully, heading downstairs, heading towards the bedroom door and giving them all an artificial wave. <laughs> I'll call you guys down once it's ready, okay? Okay. Norman bubbly agreed, waving back before leaving you leave. I can't wait. I love your food, Ryan. I know you do. You pleasantly told him, shutting your bedroom door behind you once you replied. I know you do. You absolute idiot. Billy snapped at Norman as soon as the door had closed. Are you blind? What on earth are you talking about, you jerk? Norman angrily retorted, pulling his knife out from his pocket and gripping it. Could you not see how hard she was trying? Billy pointed out with gritted teeth, pointing towards the door once he replied to the once he replied to the opposite slasher. How hard she was struggling to, to hold it all in? Stu joined in furiously, grasping a knife of his own before standing right next to Billy. Not to now that you mention it, I did sense unusually high levels of anger and annoyance during her time in here. Pennywise thoughtfully commented, holding his thumb and forefinger against his chin while he thought about what he'd let, felt beforehand. I found it all rather entertaining, if... You asked yours truly. Freddy drawed out with a devious grin, sitting on top of your bedroom door and finding everybody else's distress funny. Actually, I picked up on how she felt. Cutting the demonic killer off, Hannibal answered Billy and Stu with an honest response, the psychiatrist's voice softening as he spoke. I noticed. I noticed from the very first time she placed the blame on Kruger. Oh. 
And what was that you picked up on exactly? Billy lashed out jealously. Dislike and distrust clouding his features, Wilsey glared towards him instead of Norman. How upset she's growing. How betrayed she's feeling. She isn't be just becoming scared by the doll as of late. She's scared that this isn't a prank anymore. Hannibal sternly told everyone, his, vo his tone shifting into one of solemnness instead of his usual steadiness. Mm-hmm. Guess that you're not a complete sociopath. Billy spoke sourly, still not trusting any of the slashers, apart from Stu. I guess not. The smart killer smirked in a condescending manner, finding Billy's comment to be relatively amusing. Though, do forgive me if I am not to accuse you of being one. I wouldn't forgive any of you motherfuckers if for doing anything you did, do, or have done previously, especially not towards YN. Billy threatened hatefully, bringing out a knife of his bring out a knife of his own and keeping hold of said weapon the very moment he finished speaking. Fair enough. Moving on to more important matters then, Hannibal decided firmly, shifting his attention over to the wardrobe and eyeing the creepy looking toy. What are we gonna do about the doll? If if we don't do something soon, then Ryan will keep on suspecting us. Norman fearfully bursted out, clutching his spare hand against his chest as he hurriedly became petrified. She'll, she keep on thinking that we're the ones to blame or we're the ones who, who are behind this. Correct. If we don't take immediate action shortly, she won't continue trusting any of us for much longer. The psychiatrist stated with more seriousness, staring it down and remembering what said object contained. That said object contains soul power in it. She'll grow more and more suspicious of us until she won't even want to live within this house anymore. Mikael wrote obsessively, the stalker now feeling massively unnerved and on edge. Perhaps we should just get rid of it? Stu slowly thought aloud, musing over said subject and, and also glancing at the doll too. Well, that would be good. What good would that do? Pennywise responded with bewilderment, the clown not understanding a and frowning from confusion. If it's all that powerful, then it'll just reappear the very next day. I'm heading downstairs. Billy decided in a firm tone of voice, leaving Wine's bedroom before hearing her call his name. Wine might need me. Me too. Wine may need my comfort and assistance as well. Stu spoke determinedly, hearing his name get called and before, and bef therefore leaving the room too. Wine is everything okay? Billy carefully inquired, entering the kitchen before standing by your side. You're not too upset, are you? Nope. You replied cheerfully, flashing them a smile and trying to behave in a bright manner. I guess I'm just a little stressed out, that's all. Why in? He sighed in despair. I can always tell when something's bothering you. Always. Okay, okay, I get it. I'm, I'm a tiny bit exhausted. You admitted wearily. Welling your eyes while cooking dinner, but it's not that bad. It could be worse. I'm sorry. Billy apologized all of a sudden. The dark-haired male expressed regret and showing signs of remorse as he spoke. I'm so, so sorry. You wouldn't be dealing with this if we hadn't coerced you into bringing the doll home. I wouldn't put too much thought or effort into it. You decided an amusement, finishing up dinner before placing on the plate placing it on the plates. Besides, it was probably just one of the others pulling a prank on me anyway. Oh, you think so? Stu mewled curiously, both males hugging you from the side and before, and therefore causing you to feel happier. You really think the others would go that far? Believe me, they would. Really. You told them, you lightly told them, laying the table and getting, re getting it ready. Anyway, if you'd like, there's more than enough food, so feel more free Feel more than free to join in or share. Sure, sounds like fun. Thanks, Wyan. He warmly answered, taking a seat next to you before shooting you a smug before shooting a smug look towards the others. Chapter fifty one Dramatic Dining Forgive me for interrupting, but I couldn't help but notice that you seem to have used a fresh type of recipe as of late. Hannibal gently commented. Picking up on your current culinary skills before realizing your professional expertise and deciding to compliment you in the process once he entered the kitchen himself. Oh, uh, yeah, I have. You awkwardly responded. Watching the expert cook develop his design and create his dish after he'd gotten his meal ready. I'm assuming that you created a 
new a fresh new type of recipe too? Your exception would turn out to be correct. The dark haired male replied calmly, flashing you a soft hearted smile as he started to begin cooking dinner also. After all, a recipe has no soul. You, as the cook, must bring soul to the recipe. I suppose I've never really thought about it that way. You mulled over said words casually, calling the others down after completing your meal for your meal for everybody and moving into the dining room. I assume cooking is more of an art than anything, more of chemistry. So it would seem. Hannibal remarked in amusement, following you into the same room before taking a seat and placing everything on the table. You need to be more of an artist. You need to be able to show your creative, your creative side. I'd say Wyan's already pretty creative. Norman cut in defensively, sitting down opposite you while, gra while gratitude flowed from his tone. Billy Stu, Mikael, and Penny thanking you quietly afterwards. Oh, I couldn't agree more. The psychiatrist agreed pleasantly, tucking into his food bef something before dipping his head as a polite nod. In fact, I'd say that Wyan's exponentially talented when it comes to the culinary arts and intellectuals. You don't have to go that far. You shyly mumbled, embarrassment clouding your face while you also carried on eating and continued to avoid everybody's glances at the dinner table. I just occasionally create meals for you guys during dinner time, and you guys just so happen to appreciate them. That's all. In fact, I'd say that Wyan is the most creative person I've ever met. That is such a lie, dude. It hurts me when you say that like, damn. Norman bursted out passionately, love and affection dripping from his tone while he struggled to contain himself 100%. <clears throat> Is that so? You hesitantly commented, feeling more and more embarrassed by the minute. I'll, uh, I'll simply take your word for it, then. T thanks, Norman. You needn't go so embarrassed, my dear. <laughs> Hannibal chuckled in amusement, wrapping up his meal for the evening first and finding your shyness to be somewhat sweet. I don't think it. I just don't think it's that big of a deal. You decided with a dusted. You decided with dusted pink cheeks, finishing your food shortly after Hannibal had it. Before noticing that most of the others had too. Damn, you hadn't realized that Billy Stu, Penny, and Billy Stu, Mikael, Penny, and Norman were just such fast eaters. Hopefully, they weren't impatient. I'm sorry if I kept you guys waiting that long. <laughs> I didn't realize you guys were so quick at finishing food, and nobody said that you did. Millie tenderly chipped in, the brown-haired slasher flashing you an insanely loving smile while he rested his chin on top against the top of his hands as he spoke ne to you next. Yeah, we'd never grow impatient because of you, Ian. You could never irritate us. Stu warmly added, shooting you a grin before crossing his arms and trying to reassure you too. Understand that? Understand what exactly? That everyone's faster at eating food than myself? You sarcastically pointed out, rolling your eyes once you'd finished eating for the night. We're not that much quicker. Tilting his head in bewilderment, Penny frowned and grew confused. Not understanding why you were so nervous about causing unanticipated agitation. So what's the problem here? You didn't even do anything to provoke us this time around. You are seriously slow. You unsentimental fucker. Billy insulted Pennywise maliciously, losing his caring nature as he sharply stood up, slamming his hands on the table moments later. Billy, Stu pa panicked with anxiety, standing up at the same time and attempting to calm his friend down. This is the first time we've ever hit eaten here before. Remember? We talked about this. Exactly. There's no need for fighting, you guys. You fearfully exclaimed your eyes widening due to the unexpected hatred blossoming between Billy and Penny. So what the, what the hell is their problem? Excuse me? And who are you calling seriously slow? Penny creepily laughed, his voice becoming high-pitched and unbalanced as he shifted into his darker form once more. You clearly, oh, and just why is that? Are you fucking with, are you fucking kidding me right now? What are you, blind or something? No, I have unparalleled senses when it comes to life forms, unlike you two pathetic whelps. Yeah, I don't think so, mate. You don't think so? He starts laughing. 
Penny, I think you're starting to take things a little bit too far. You instantly stepped in. Standing up and deciding to hold his hands in yours, why don't we all just calm down and take a breather instead? But those two are being so, so disrespectful towards my kind, he hissed hatefully, glaring in their direction while trying to place the blame a hundred percent on Billy and Stu. What, how? Billy stepped back, feeling defensive and sulky now himself. Honestly, I didn't, I actually can't believe just how delusional and stuck up you seem to be. Stu sternly agreed, coming to his friend's aid and picking up on the clown at the same time. Picking on the clown. What are you two, jealous? Penny sneered smugly, smirking at them both before continuing. Crazy? Mate, what the fuck is wrong with Penny? Pennywise, hold on a second. Or maybe you just both hate yourself so much. So much that you finally realize your lack of self-worth. Penny! He whispered in horror, scared by the clown's sharp comment and nasty personality switch. You're, you're scaring me a little. Wyan, I think you should leave. I don't think this is a very safe place for you to be for the time being. Hannibal stepped in responsibly, his tone respectful and pleasant. I'll wash the dishes for you. Norman nervously volunteered, his voice stammering as he collected the dishes and watched the verbal fight between the three unstable killers conference commence here I'll, I'll i'll be right back why 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 would she leave why isn't it safe for her right now what's the problem here huh huh pennywise question pennywise question with one of his unhinged giggles reacting to the psychiatrist's word but also not taking his response too well the problem here is you you get that mate Stu retaliated fur furiously him and Billy backing into the hallway while they stepped away from the massively deranged clown. Me? Why me? Why am I the problem? Penny demanded psychotically, following them closer to the front door as he clutched a random knife. Dearest, I really think you should leave and head upstairs until this is all over. Placing a hand lightheartedly on your shoulder, Hannibal stopped you from going after them and stood beside you instead, wrapping his arm around your waist a moment later so he could fully prevent you from getting involved. I, uh, I think I might just say goodnight to everyone still, you know? Stumbling over your formal words, you fumbled for a response and faintly smiled, breaking apart from him and swiftly hurrying towards the others. Why, and sweetheart, please wait. Here's a suggestion. Have you two ever considered killing yourselves? It would be beneficial for your mental health and overall reputations. Wow. <laughs> Pennywise laughed even harder like a psychopath. Actually getting ready to take out Billy and Stu with his knife once he threatened them to that degree. Helping you out, Miguel came to your aid and stopped the other slasher. The white mask stalker slamming the psychotic clown violently against the wall and before snapping him out of his mentally unsound state. Okay, I think that's enough for tonight. You interjected with a timid laugh of your own. Alarmed by not only Pennywise's behavior, but also Miguel's terrifyingly cold acts of violence. And you seriously trust trust the psycho billy inquired ragingly the tone of his voice utterly dripped with dislike and distrust why don't you two just head home and i'll text you both tomorrow you sympathetically promised giving him and sue both a, a soothing hug and kiss straight afterwards i swear i will okay well if you say so still sounding suspicious billy cautiously agreed to your offer and returned to your loving affection and returned your loving affections Stu, doing the same shortly after everybody around you had resumed composture. Thank goodness. Chapter 52. False Allegations. Once you'd waved goodbye and shut the front door behind them, you breathed a sigh of relief and eventually just leaned against it, knowing that most likely everything was all right. Mostly. Finally, finally! Pennywise psychotically laughed teleporting directly in front of your eyes before bringing you immediately into an overly obsessive cuddle. This is really all I wanted. Oh, um, no offense, Penny, but I think I might just head upstairs now. Faking a false yawn, you pretended to feel exhausted and flashed him a sleepy smile, forging a stretch as you hugged Penny in return. I'm sorry, I wish we could spend more time together, but I'm just so, so tired. Uh, oh, no, 
no, that, that's okay. I, I understand. I get it. He sweetly re reassured you. Cuddling clo you closer before resting his head on top of yours for a moment or two cutely. Really, I, I do. Want me to head upstairs with you, Ryan? I, I can even turn around while you change into your pajamas. Joining the conversation happily, Norman clutched his chest with both of his hands before glancing towards you pleadingly, looking as if he almost was desperate for the chance to spend time, more time with you. Sure, I just need to say goodnight to everybody else first. First, Norman. So, yeah, excuse me. Everybody else first, Norman. You timidly told him, interacting with Hannibal, Pennywise, Miguel, all individually. So you could wish each and every one of them sweet dreams and a lovely rest of their evenings. Once you had, you made your way back upstairs and switched pajamas, not only becoming suspicious, but also very confused. The moment you stepped into your bedroom for the night. And why was that, you ask? Oh, no reason at all. It's not like that stupid Chucky doll had changed positions again, but who could have done it? Who could, who was the, who was to blame for this? Jason was loyally protecting Camp Crystal Lake and had never, ever left. Billy and Stu had been downstairs at the dinner table with her alongside Penny, Miguel, Hannibal, and Norman. So the only possible sus suspect left to be responsible was Freddy. Freddy himself, the infamous dream demon known for messing around and causing mischief whenever he, wherever he went. God damn it. You should have noticed it sooner. It had to be him, after all. Who else could it have been? He was the only one who hadn't been at the dinner table with the rest of you. And he could also teleport whenever he wanted. Not to mention he wasn't exactly known for his honesty, morality, or reliability. So once you'd grown even more pissed off, you called his name and ordered him to show himself. The dream demon popping into reality was also appearing rather bored. Surprising. He jawed out devilishly his green eyes gleaming with naughtiness while he leaned against your bedroom wall. I don't think you'd ever call me out like this before, princess, especially since I'm a literal god. Don't even start. You snapped back at him angrily, gritting your teeth and causing the whole demonic slasher to become somewhat confused. You've got some serious explaining to do, you dick. I'm sorry, excuse me? Laughing in disbelief, Freddy narrowed his eyes and smirked, darkly smirked. Furious by the sudden accusations and allegations that had been flung towards him. And just what the fuck did I do exactly? Oh, I think you know exactly what you did. You hardly retaliated. Too worked up to think properly or even give him the benefit of the doubt. You pretend to skip out of socializing with myself and the others, but really you just want to mess around with me and move that stupid doll around now. Don't you? Why don't you wake up then, little girl? Because I absolutely have nothing to do with your pathetic little soul power problem. Okay, bitch? He responded with rage, pushing himself away from your bedroom wall so he could hold his so he could hold his finger knives out towards you threateningly. Maybe I should stay awake. At least that would stop me from dreaming and help me figure out what the hell's going on around here. You bitterly lashed out. Messing with him in return and purposely trying to rile him up at the same time. Oh, really now? You intend to push me that far because I really don't know. I really don't think that's a very good idea at the moment. Beautiful. Sounding even more unstable, Freddy took a few steps towards, towards you and grinned. His unhinged, his unhinged seductiveness causing your frustrated state to falter for a second or two. But then you shook your head and glared stubbornly, knowing that he was just trying to mess with you. Mess with your head. You're the one pushing me. Why don't you just admit it already? You scolded him strictly, not backing down and deciding to just argue with the dream demon from the very beginning. How can I admit something I didn't fucking do? He hatefully hissed, losing his temper before swiping his gloved hand straight through your bed sheets and shredding the covers. Because I don't think that you're entirely innocent. You replied annoyingly, annoyedly, continuing the interrogation and attempting to find out what was going on around here, around with the doll. You just wanted an answer, and you were going to get one, whether he felt like giving you one or not. Oh, you you don't. Now you do? This, this, excuse me. The sadistic killer chuckled smugly, his smile growing creepier and creepier as his left hand literally y yanked your right wrist closer to him. Hey! You called out in a panicked tone. Your eyes widening due to the 
due to not expecting Freddy to actually tug you into his grasp and lose control. What the hell are you doing? I'll give you to the count of three to take back what you just said to me. He purred psycho psychotically. Finding your fear to be ridiculously funny when he sensed it. How? When he sensed how uneasy you felt. And why should I? One. But you're the one who's responsible for this. Two. But this is so stupid. Three. Freddy angelically hummed, his emerald green eyes glinting with a sadistic intent before whispering something sinister into your ear. Sorry, gorgeous. Looks like someone here needs to be. Leave Wyan alone, Kruger. Norman yelled over the dream demon dramatically, basically rushing into the room so he could shove the other slasher from you as quickly as humanely possible. You're bothering her, so, so just back off. Duh, mama's boy. You ruined all the fun. Why do you always have nothing but a, but a fucking killjoy? Cruelly shouting at the dark-haired male, he stuck his tongue out before speedily recovering from the former shove, slashing straight back at Norman with, insane, with his insanely sharp finger knives and scraping through the opposite killer's shoulder, though his skin, as his skin was nothing but paper. He didn't even know what to say, his unreliable act of violence forcing you to freak out yet again. Norman, are, are you okay? You gasp in a worried manner, moving closer to him as so you delicately hold, so you could delicately hold his wound, sh wounded shoulder between your hands and take a look at his bleeding injury. Oh, God, that looks like it, it must really hurt. Pfft. If he can't recover from that, then he's more worthless than I thought. Freddy sneered venomously, insulting Norman immediately off the bat whilst also smirking. Please don't worry, Ryan. I'm, I'm, well, I'm fine. Norman weakly smiled, pleased by the major amount of attention you were giving to him and not the other male. <laughs> Kruger is nothing but a big bully. That's all. Right, because you're so much better now, aren't you? The Nightmare Slasher taunted hastily, preparing to attack Norman a second time and force him to repeatedly suffer. Such a little sweetheart. That's enough. Just leave him alone already. You fiercely demanded, standing in front of him and deciding to defend him physically from Freddy instead. We're done here, okay? I've had it. I can't take it anymore. Chapter 53. Stretching Sincerity. Why should I leave him alone? After all, I'm not the one who's still fucking... Wyan, is everything all right in here, sweet dearest? Hannibal interrupted Freddy calmly, entering the room without a second thought before immediately leaning against your bedroom's doorframe. These two aren't giving you any trouble now, are they? If so, please don't be reluctant to confirm. <laughs> giving me any trouble uh, um you stammered from former shock your eyes still white from surprise once you turned back to the dark-haired male i just need to clean i just need to clean out and give norman actual bandages before his bleeding drips into even worse to an even worse state i doubt that norman nor kruger will tell me what's happened during the last few minutes so would you kindly inform me as to who managed this Retrable chain of events, Miyakara. The psychiatrist pleasantly inquired, directing his, uh, this question towards you after Mikael had insane instantly shot him past him in the speed of light and moved straight next to your side within nothing but seconds. I was convinced that Freddy was the one moving the doll around the house, from the living room to the bathroom to my bedroom, etc., etc. You said with from disappointment, feeling not only dispirited, but disheartened too. And what exactly made you think that Fru that Kruger was that was the one held responsible for that. Hannibal gently asked, taking the palm of your hands in his and giving them a very soft squeeze straight afterwards. Well, be because trailing off, you had no idea how to answer or even respond. Due to the fact that it was clear now that Freddy seemed to be definitely, it was clear now that Freddy seemed to be definitely not the creep that you were looking for. Because he was the only person not at the dinner table tonight, and Jason would never ever leave Camp Crystal Lake to simply mess with me. Listen, bitch, just because I wasn't at your little silly little supper earlier doesn't mean I was the one who fucked around with you before, understand? The dream demon snapped f back stubbornly, throwing a temper tantrum and gritting his teeth whilst planning an attack against Norman a third time. H how 
dare you? Norman furiously cut in, pretending not to feel pain while he glared towards the raging slasher. Why don't you ever show Wyatt any sort, sort of respect, huh? Huh? And what's exactly going on here? A certain clown called out curiously. Teleporting at your other to your other side straight away before shifting into his darker form and starting to become stressed out himself. I blame little mama's boy entirely. Freddy lied uncaringly, raising his finger and eyes forefinger and pointing it in, in Norma's direction with nothing but an unstable smirk. After all, he's the son of a bitch who keeps annoying me for absolutely no reason. Freddy, that's not a reason. You pointed out an annoyance, biting your lip and pretending to keep everybody and attempting to keep everybody calm. From Freddy to Norman to Penny to Hannibal, and finally, Mika, what's not a reason? What did he do? Penny possessively demanded, worry washing through his expression as he shot a suspicious look towards the demonic slasher. How is the, was this my fault? Cooler slashed at my shoulder and then took this whole situation out on my end. Norman cried out on the to the clown spitefully, shifting Freddy's ab sophisticated sentence into an even more obstructive version of the truth oh great i believe you might be stretching the sincerity of your last statement a tiny bit there norman hannibal summarized with a smooth manner already able to shut down the childish fighting between freddie norman and the soon to be pennywise too there's a whole lot of words in and miguel are you okay i'm growing worried about you there's only so much one person can take you're going up against these types of stressful things and you'll break. Stop pushing yourself too hard. This is far too dangerous for you. And this isn't just because of soul power that you're dealing with. You're dealing with children like those three as well. Can't you understand? Just be more careful, please. For me? Norman scribbled to you furiously, shaking his head once sh once he shoved the notepad, shoving you the notepad and doing his best to not to stop potential danger from befalling you children like those three nah what a fucking joke speak for yourself motherfucker the hateful dream demon spat back at the stalker in an uncontrollable rage smacking Miguel's notepad straight out of his hands and into the your bedroom floor instead yeah i think i'm done here you muttered underneath your breath before turning to norman and checking that his bleeding hadn't increased or gotten any more serious Let's get you into the bathroom, okay? You really don't have to worry about it, you know, I am. Norman mumbled with embarrassment, looking to the side while faintly blushing and shyly smiling at your support. Really, it shouldn't... It really is not that big of a deal. Hannibal, would you... Would you mind helping me fix Norman's wounds? Now, please? Requesting the psychiatrist's help and stumbling over your words in the process, you prayed that he agreed to assist you despite obviously not liking any of the other males that you were dating. <laughs> to your surprise, he casually accepted, supporting Norman from the other side while shooting you an incredibly soft smile. It would be my pleasure, Mia Ma. Hannibal gently answered, his response causing Norman to narrow his eyes and grow coldly suspicious as the three of you entered the bathroom and left the other room. You're helping me now? Norman questioned defensively, not trusting him in the slightest and deciding to glare at Hannibal from the top of the toilet seat instead. Why wouldn't I? I just agreed to help and heal you after all. The other ma male reminded him casually, shrugging before throwing Norman an insanely amused smile. This should only take a few minutes at most. You comfortably reassured the dark-haired boy, finding medical supplies in the bathroom cupboard and handing them towards Hannibal directly afterwards. I may not be the best nurse in the world, but here, you should be able to fix them up fairly well, shouldn't you? While I may or may not be as one of as, as of late, I have been a former surgeon in one of my previous occupations, believe it or not, mi amor. The psychiatrist brought up cleverly, taking the necessary things out of your grasp as he smartly explained how skilled he was at resorting others back to their original health health states. So you fixed up people like this before? You're not just a psychiatrist then? You curiously inquired, watching him clean out Norman's rooms and bandage them up in return as well. Indeed, I would repair others back to their natural accustomed physical conditions and their usual mental mannerisms usually every, every other day. Hannibal told you intelligently, his words sounding more and more condescending with each sentence he spoke. Oh, is that so? 
you responded with a dry tone, doing your best to not roll your eyes and help Norman in the meantime. How thoughtful of you. More like selfish. <laughs> the dream demon insulted rudely, scraping his finger knives against the door bathroom's door frame and sounding strangely jealous all of a sudden. Honestly, I'd show Lecter's true colors if it wasn't for little mama's boy over there behaving like a baby and using her via childish emotions. Hey, I'm not! Norman retaliated with a high-pitched voice, hating the demonic slasher offensive insult right off the bat. You're the one who's just using her, guys. Please. You sighed in despair, just flooding through your veins as you decided to just call it a night. Can't we just leave this alone? Norman almost healed and, is, and it is getting late. I just want to go to sleep and head off. Perfectly fine by me, bitch. Freddy declared angrily, hating on each and every one of the other slashers within a single second. I'm more than done with these losers. Besides, it's all that stupid toy's fault anyway. Freddy, wait. Before you could say anything else to console him, the burnt slasher vanished into thin air, clearly salty from more loss of pride, or so it appeared. Wowee. A whole bunch of emotions clashing against each other. Wowee. Well, that has been quite a show, guys. <laughs> what do y'all think? is going to be happening next do you guys think that they will find out who was the one who's been doing it or exactly how the doll's been moving let me know in the comments down below but for now y'all's gonna have to wait till the next futuristic video comes out which hopefully will be soon <laughs> so uh, um because i read a lot today Whew. i read like i think about like 10 chapters in one video that's like a goal ain't it period um anywho guys <laughs> i hope you guys did enjoy this though like subscribe and hit the notification bell for more amazing videos guys your girls sadly got to get going and whatnot i would like to make some little exciting side notes that does not involve the story so there you go a little forewarning so first guys guess what y'all know my beautiful beautilicious cat casper here's a little picture of him on the screen so i um there was this competition going on about this like cat calendar thing or whatnot I signed them up in it for fun, you know, for funsies. And then I think a week ago or so, I found out that he was able to get into the cat calendar for 2025. And I was so happy. And then I ordered it. And then I was able, I, it, it finally arrived. And here's a picture of him. He's the first one, that you, the first cat that you see. And he is so cute, my baby. Oh no, y'all, stop. <laughs> he is so adorable in it, y'all. Y'all, he's so cute. If you guys want to order one or whatnot, you know, just for funsies, or if you want to like support a really good cause, because if um, all the uh, funds directly go to helping animals, adoption, um, taking care. You know, just a lot of really good causes I feel like a lot of people would like to support. And you could do that by just buying this calendar. Um, so if y'all want to buy it, um, I'm going to link it in the description down below. And if I can, in the comments as well. Um, so you guys can go check it out. And Casper will be in it, guys. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so proud of my baby. <laughs> so yeah, but I'm so happy I got mine. I hooked it on the door and I was like, my baby, the first one. There's some other really beautiful and unique cats like there was one that i saw that i really liked and it was his the cats was a black cat his name was hades with like blue fire in the background and i was like okay that that might be the action that might be the cat version of hades come on now <laughs> but y'all find out i don't want to spoil too much for the cats because all the cats are super cute and adorable and y'all should totally order one if y'all can um for some other side notes, I finally decorated the fish tanks as well. So the fishies are in the Christmas spirit. Here's another picture. 
I know, it's so adorable, am I right? <laughs> I've been decorating their thing because why not? Fish deserve to be in the Christmas spirit too. <laughs> also, for one good pet news, Casper finally got a new bed. Y'all, he's had this bed like on the picture above for like since he was like here with me for like about like two to three years. He's had this bed and it's his original, the original, right? Um, and I've noticed that, you know, he may be starting to grow out of it and whatnot, and it wasn't as fluffy as it used to be. And, you know, I, I think I could do better, right? So I went looking around Ross, Walmart, you name it. They have expensive ass beds, like 30, 30 some bucks. So a day ago or two, as this video has been made, I went to Big Lots with my mom and I was looking at all the cat beds and y'all tell me why. I found this big one on the screen right now. Only $24. And it was one of those really like, those really like good branded, like really plushy, like as if it was like a Squishmallow. But instead of a normal Squishmallow, it's like a cat bed Squishmallow for the cat. And I was like, it's a cookie. I got the cookie one. They had like a, they had a, gen they had a deer one and they had a bread, uh, they had a tree one. I got the cookie one. Y'all, this thing is the cutest and softest thing I, this cat has probably ever had as a bed in his life. And honestly, when I like, when me and my mom got it, like from Big Lots and shit, when we came home with it and I let it, left it, like laid it down and added some little, like that little wee weed for kit, cats, aka, um, what's it, whatchamacallit? <laughs> whatchamacallit? Y'all know what I mean, like that good shit, that little wee-wee for cats, right? And then I also, like, you know, like, added a little bit of my scent, like, like you know, like, my scent to it or something, you know, like, a shirt or something. That man, I've never seen a cat literally, like, just lay down and spread out. He absolutely loved it. And then, um, no, that man slept like a baby on this bed, I'll tell you what. And I think he absolutely loves it, so... <laughs> So, yeah, I just wanted to share those nice and really happy announcements, guys. I'm with y'all because I feel like I would really appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, guys, let me know of some amazing pet news that you guys may have. Mm -hmm. Please let me know, y'all. Let me know. Anywho, y'all, passing those announcements. Now your girl's going to officially be leaving now. Um, I hope everyone has an amazing and great day. Um if you haven't, I hope your day gets better. Love you guys. Bye and peace.